Hello, and welcome to Comics Icons. Now, JJ, what they call me. And on this channel, we're going to be breaking down some of the hottest comic book issues and stories from some of the most iconic characters. The story we're discussing today is Miss Marvel, the New Mutant, issue number three. So issue three begins with Kamala still in that dream that we saw her begin at the end of the last issue as she introduces the audience to Dr. Surfer. Now in this dream, she rides around with Dr. Surfer through space on his surfboard as he reveals that he can hear her thoughts. So Dr. Surfer then kind of acts as a therapist for Kamala and she reveals to him that she's scared of all the changes and doesn't want to become unrecognizable. They then see Kamala's flying sloth pillow. Yes, I said flying sloth pillow. You heard that right. Along with some Krakoan writing. So they decide to follow because, you know, what else are you going to do? So then we get a glimpse of the scientists at Orcus. This is Dr. Nikita Gaia activating that little bug that we saw in issue two. Project Trojan Horse is what it's called. And it's meant to plant a psychic bomb via a signal. Her brain would intercept the signal. Well, I'm sorry, her brain would interpret the signal as coming from herself and her mind would give it a shape and a form. So the bomb would then spread to everybody within one telepathic network and end them. I'm talking about, you know, unalive. Cancel Christmas on them, you dig? But this bomb would only work if Miss Marvel allows it past the firewall by accepting it. So Dr. Gaia then gives Karima a little taste of what's gonna happen to the mutants once it's activated, showing us that she had actually implanted this same device into Karima and activates it, breaking her down to the ground. I'm talking about breaking her on down, 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 down to the ground. Now back in Dreamland, Ms. Marvel and Dr. Surfer go back to a past moment in Kamala's life. Now, this is a moment between Kamala and her friends, and they all seem to be pretty damn happy. You know, they just got a chance to work on an assignment together as a team, which they mentioned never happens. So Kamala then tells Dr. Surfer that it's a little bit jarring to watch itself in the third person like this. So he switches the scene up to make it look like they watching themselves on watching her on the big screen with some popcorn. As, as Kamala then notices a mysterious cloaked figure, something then webs up her popcorn. What the heck? Then meanwhile, we go back into the real world. And Bruno now detects that there's a problem. Something's wrong here. And he finds the Orcus bug because he, he detected a signal. So he finds the Orcus bug in Kamala's scalp. And then he tries to wake her up. But she's super night-night. She ain't getting up. So back in this dream world, we see the source of the web, and it's actually a giant spider with a Spider-Man mask. Like, hell, I don't have these type of dreams. I don't know about y'all, but he's attacking them. This Dr. Surfer then blasts the giant arachnid. Miss Marvel is then attacked by a version of Captain America that a mind just conjured up. Now this, this Captain America, this variant is a trip, man. He calls a murderous little mutie. <laughs> murderous little mutie, come here. And then tells her that she's a cancer. So then she's saved by that cloaked figure. The same cloaked figure that Kamala seen on the big screen. And then we, the audience, saw on the orchid screen back when they explained the Trojan horse. So the cloaked figure then reveals herself to Kamala as her mutation, which to me looks an awful lot like her light powers from in the MCU, I'm just saying. But back at Orcus, we see the Trojan horse has now been hacked by Bruno, my dog Bruno, which forces Orcus to shut down their system and reboot. 
you know, you gotta hit control or delete. You gotta unplug it. You know, you have to. And this now this hack though, it allows them to track back where the signal came from and find out that it's actually coming from the dorms. Meanwhile, that real battle is happening inside Kamala's mind. As a mutation begins to try to convince her to accept it, we see that Kamala is unsure whether or not to accept it because she feels like this, this, this is way too easy. And then when the mutation tells her that she become a god, Kamala refuses. Oh hell no, that never works out. So we then see as Orcus realizes that she's resisting the Trojan horse, they decide to pivot and go find the source of the hack back at the dorms and prioritize the people that are asleep. We then see a back and forth between Bruno, who's still trying to wake Kamala, and in her dream, where she's still busy trying to fight off this Trojan horse. When a drone shows up in the dorm room, my man Bruno thinks fast and he pulls a wiki and it burnies and disguises a sleeping Kamala to look like she's awake. And it actually tricks the facial recognition software. And, and to be honest, I think with this software, they need to go and get their money back. Um, maybe they, they, they keep they keep out winning this, this system. The system kind of sucks in my opinion. But back in the dream world, Kamala is now realizing that being a mutant doesn't necessarily erase any other part of who she is. And she calls Dr. Surfer for some aid and assistance. And she's able to then conjure up the rest of her fan fiction characters. She squatted up now. And now they can fight back and resist the Trojan horse. Finally. Finally. Kamala then awakens. Just in time to get detected. By a big ass Stark Sentinel. That rolls up on the dorm room saying mutant detected. And begins to blash. And issue three comes to an end on a hell of a cliffhanger. You see how they do us? Hey. But stay tuned to the next edition, the next episode of Comics Icons to hear the conclusion of this story. And if you'd like to show this channel some love, please like and share and subscribe for more icons in the comic book world.